Hello everyone and welcome to the 2024 Memorial Championship, a second featured card. That's right, we had one tee off earlier in the day and now we're bringing you the afternoon card. Paul Uliberry along with Anthony Barella. Third on the card, we'll see our world champion Isaac Robinson. And rounding us out, our defending Memorial Champion Gannon Burr. Another lap around the track. Hope you enjoyed the action. You probably already saw the other feature card. I had Goose in the booth with me. Goose in the booth? Is that a thing? Well, we made it a thing. Right now, you've got me solo so that we could get this action out for a second feature card. Hole 1, 393 feet. If you're going right at the pin, you need to go about 385 to get there. Otherwise, you hang it out to the right. You've got plenty of room over here, but you have to control the speed and the angle. Otherwise, you can easily skip into the water or go past the basket and go OB. Yuli. Safe. Conservative. No trouble there. Arizona's own Anthony Barella coming off the win last weekend. That is well short. It doesn't cross any part of the inbounds area. He'll go immediately to the drop zone, which is where we see the FPO competitors tee from. Robinson almost ringing one up on the first hole. Trying to pull a DOS of 10 years ago. And in dramatic fashion, we watched Gannon Burr take this down last year, right here on the channel, in a playoff. Hangs that one out to the high right side. Barella, now 318 to the pin from here. Oh, and from almost going in the basket to then trickling into the water, OB again. I was gonna say a double OB for AB. Rough start. Just a step inside the circle here for Burr. <laughs> that one thankfully stays in bounds as he's pulled it to the right. Nice little step putt that we see from Robinson starting off with a birdie. And you're going to hear plenty of construction that's going on all around the park. There's only so much we can do about that. But the players also have to contend with it as AB is in for the double. Very rough start here. He'll lose three strokes to Robinson alone on this card. Gannon able to bring it in up to one meter. And I believe it's the water's edge. Actually, no, I, I guess they say if you do hit the wall, you're in bounds. Either way, short range putt, not a problem. Volunteer relieved of his duties. Thank you for the service and support here today. Again, our last feature card going out right around 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. Pull two, 703 feet. One of two par fours that we'll find on the course. You'd love to land right about here. And then usually a hyzering backhand, righty backhand shot comes just inside of that tree to put you on the dance floor. Going up that right side gap. Robinson, you're, that obviously brings a gap into play. The other risk is if you want to go out and over the water with a forehand.
Yuli is going to go up the right side. Nice and low. Grass a little bit lusher, a little bit thicker. And not too many skips so far. Exactly what you're trying to do. Uh, you, you can bite off a little bit more. Does that gain you anything major? Not really. Just trying to put yourself on a nice flat spot. Not contend or flirt too much with the water. Pretty similar result there for Barella. wide challenging that backside OB line but he's safe our first light check-in told me that this is 419 feet to the pin circles edge as I mentioned this is one of two par fours that the MPO players will have here and hole eight. Just inside the tree, but too fast. Barella, his third OB penalty in two holes. Looks wide enough, a couple of skips. Deep of the pin, but the closest of the bunch. And that is the first sign of wind that we've really had today. There was the lightest of wind a few hours earlier around the 11.30 time when we had our first MPO feature card go off, but now it's actually noticeable. Little length to that putt for Gannon. I thought he was closer. Looks like a par at best. My left side chain, not gonna help him much. Uh, I was gonna say on this basket, most baskets for that matter. So after going OB, Barella still has an opportunity here to save the par. He'll do just that. Hole two played as one of only four holes over par on the day for our MPO field. Played as the fourth most difficult. Hole one played as the third most difficult. So you're getting two of the tougher holes out of the way to get your round started. Four point zero nine was the average for the entire field here on hole number two today. All right, water shouldn't come into play on the next couple of holes. Let's see if these guys can get something going. Just 294 to the pin. There is a right side OB. You see that line there? That's actually hole number two. So hole two, you could go out of bounds to the right. And on hole three, going the opposite way, you can go out of bounds to the right. And then there's the sidewalk along with the semi-circle OB directly behind the pin. All things to consider.
Gonna push off to the left side. Safe though. That's wide. Not too wide, <laughs> but at least thinking about the OB for a moment. It's interesting to hear Goose talk about how th he really feels like this is an either-or hole in terms of the righty forehand or the righty backhand. Almost an identical shot either way. Obviously, you just go with whatever you feel more comfortable with. And a huge mistake by Gannon. This is about as stock of a shot as you get. Plenty of height, getting it to spike down is what we see from Barella. Burr with an opportunity to save par. Yuli looks about the same distance. Opposite wind, which is probably pushing down, maybe over his right shoulder and pushing straight down. Looks like there's a slight distraction off in the background. Gonna fully reset. He maybe is looking over in the area of where you see both hole five and hole four's teeing areas, so that's likely this, the distraction. Gets that one in. Good reset by Yuli. Barella, who's been off to a slow start, open with a double bogey and then an OB par. Open to chip away at some of those over par strokes. As he comes to one over. Nice little floater for Robinson. Two under through three. Best start of the group. It's pretty rare to see us three, through three holes and to see multiple people over par. I was trying to bogey that line. Jeez. Big shout out to our friends over at the Distinguished Doodle. Based right here in Arizona. All USA made products. Use the code the Disc Golf Guy. 35% off your entire order when you're out there on the distinguishedoodle.com. Code the Disc Golf Guy. Practically giving it away at that price. Come on, 35% off? Let's support some fellow disc golfers. Robinson just barely onto the island. All right, all right, that's one way to do it. <laughs> High right side skips it onto the island. AB's going the direct route. In fact, quite the opposite of what we just saw from Uliberry. It's a little effortless. 250 right to the pin. Not a problem for Burr. So all four on the island, as you'd expect. Burr trying to bounce back after the bogey on the previous. Fourth easiest hole on the course. Also, the single most birdied hole on the course. These don't necessarily always correlate. This also had plenty of bogeys, but yes, it came in as the fourth easiest, averaging 2.59. And our sample size, 103. 
103 competitors in our MPO field. This, of course, being a PDGA A tier. Let's see if I can work on getting you guys a membership code. That would make sense. Let's work on that. I'll have to call my boy Vic at the PDGA. Downhill, 441. You have the planter box on the right is out of bounds. This guardian tree is here. And then you have the utility boxes on the right side, but also road directly behind the pin, OB. That might be where this is heading. Oh, and somehow the grass doesn't grab it and keep it in. So out by just a few feet for Robinson. He has no idea that it actually did roll for him. The pin completely blind off this tee shot. Barella's going to push all the way over to the right side of the fairway for his launch. Unfortunately, he's launched it too far. That's also in the road. Rarely do we see players go deep in the road, but today, looks like it's not a problem getting there. Yuli likes it. Filters. And Burr's going to be very happy with that result. What does Perella have? A little stepper obstructed over the top. So that's, what is that, four out of bounds throws for Barella in the first five holes. Robinson also looking like a bogey. Yuli's got a birdie bid here. Downhill. Such a good putt, man. Eh. Mm. Says it was such a good putt. I mean, had good speed, good height. AB <laughs> retrieving it from way on the other side of the road. Now it's perfectly calm. That's great. <laughs> we head over to hole number six. The drone will take us down low. Most players won't go that way. Sometimes you'll go through the left side gap on the tree there, the Y. Most players will go up and over. Trick here is, well, not to land it too far right. Left is a bailout zone. You can get up and down, save an easy par if you need to. But if you go too far right, it almost inevitably will catch the hillside and then roll all the way down into the road. Like that. Except for that one checks up. Spoiler. It doesn't roll all the way down to the side of the hill. And out of bounds. It stays right there. Yuli. And it's dropping it right where it needs to be. Starting to push the danger zone where you're thinking about that circle's edge pot. Anything off on that high left side gets you a little bit nervous. But AB trying to get back on track. This is inside the circle. Robinson isn't shy about it, but just comes up barely short. Fan club loves it. 
and there was a slight roll, but only to about 22, maybe 25 feet at most. Not a problem. These guys making it look easy. Big shout out to our friends over at Six Sided Disc. They have a podcast, well, a bunch of series of videos and podcasts. One of them is Defining Disc Golf, where they talk about what is disc golf, what makes disc difference, the flight numbers. It's a brand new series. And the first two episodes premiere on Monday as this tournament concludes. So Monday, March 4th, and then Thursday, March 7th. Just a great resource if you want to send somebody to, hey, here's what I'm trying to explain in terms of disc golf. And these guys are scientific, they're professional. Greg and the crew do a great job. So check out SixSidedDisc.com. And you can also find them on any of your podcast apps and find them over on YouTube. There's a link in the description. Come on, you know how we do it. I spoke of this route earlier. It's somewhat, it's very unconventional. Not somewhat. It's very unconventional. Gossage broke it down, explained why he likes it, and I'm good with all of that. The execution wasn't there this time, though, for Yuli. Speed for A. B checks up. It's the water that's out of bounds, so he is going to be safe. I was informed something happened to the sleeve on this particular basket and or the collar, the mounting sleeve, and that's why we're seeing a temporary basket just placed there for the tournament as they'll have to work to replace the actual sleeve that a normal basket slides into. Sometimes that's mowing, sometimes that can be earth shifting, sometimes that's vandalism. All sorts of reasons why sleeves get jacked up, unfortunately, and Robinson's not concerned about any of that. Meeting of the minds going on here. <laughs> Put that in the comments. What? What would be the funniest conversation to be listening into with those two at the moment? We're watching Gannon and AB. That's what I want to hear in the comments is... What conversation would you wish they were having? Like, share, subscribe, do all those things, but that'll make you eligible for a giveaway. And Barella picks up the birdie. And just like that, a little birdie string gets him to one under. Not where you want to be through seven holes, but he's at least turned it around for now. Moves to three under. Dietrich Creative Design, based right here also out of Arizona, and working with you to do course design. So if you have any of those needs or you know someone or some municipality or person looking for a course or course design, again, link in the description. Nice, easy up and over for Burr. I can't imagine throwing that high, like ever. It's going to come in a little short, but AB is one of the few players that actually has to worry about throwing too long. If he threw this on the correct angle and too hard, he could easily find the OB water just short of the basket. So he actually needs to come up with a slightly different angle and game plan so he doesn't go too far. Problems I've never had. 
shot, baby. Yuli, center of the fairway. I was going to say, I recommend you coming out to that bench and throwing to this pin. It's a lot more daunting than you think. It's a pretty tiny peninsula. OB short, left, and beyond. Along with the slope. These guys are making it look easy so far. So three for three on the green and... Rather than an actual toss, we're going to see a jumper. Solid work. Plenty of birdies were had here on eight. One isn't from Yuli. But it ended up playing at 3.9 on the day. We had 43 birdies out of 103 competitors, but also plenty of bogeys and double bogeys. You can't put yourself that close on this hole and not convert. Not carrying over any of that Olympus magic at the moment for Anthony Barella. Clearly three more rounds to play. But you don't want to get too far behind at this tournament. This is, you're running and gunning pretty much the whole time. And you usually have to get off to a really solid start out here at Fountain. If you're not shooting double digits during each of the first two rounds, it, wow, it's just uh, too much maybe of a mountain to climb over at Vista. But we'll see what he can do. There's still a little more than half the round left. Hole 9, 406 feet. Many would say this is easily the most challenging par 3 out here on the course or any hole for that matter. Very small amount of birdies ultimately had on this hole. We'll see if our final feature card can add on to the list. And that's not really a position of birdie. Is anyone aggressive enough to go after it? Safe, but at least 100 feet to the pin. AB saying that's straight in the water. And unfortunately, he's right. I do love Gossage's approach where he says, if I'm going to go OB, I want to go OB out on the peninsula. You don't want to come up short like we're going to see from AB. You want to go way out on the peninsula, somewhere around there, so you could potentially save the par. A little toss over the lake there or the pond for AB. Again, in self assessment, says he likes it. And the same for Robinson. Maybe not the 100 feet, I think I called, but definitely layup territory from this 60, 70, 80 foot range. I think if you added Robinson's and Burr's age, you, no, okay, Yuli's not. Yuli's not that old. Definitely a veteran here and someone everyone's looked up to throughout all these years. Guys, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Again, I want to hear what your favorite uh, <laughs> comments would be if they were having a conversation that you could listen in on. This has been your second feature card. I hope you're enjoying all the extra action. 
This is what it looks like. Everyone scores. Alden Harris, who you saw earlier, having the hottest round out of all competitors through the front nine. And the disc golf guy will see you for the back nine at Fountain Hills in just a moment. 